Hi, my name is Scout Forsyth. I'm a professional ballerina with American Ballet Theater, and this week I'm gonna show you how I customize and break in my point shoes. Oh. <laughs> The life cycle of my shoes is pretty short. I've got three days. I usually spend about a half hour getting a full pair of point shoes ready. The first day is when I take them out of the bag, I customize them, I sew them, I do what I need to break them in and get them ready. By the second day, they're in the sweet spot and I'm wearing them throughout the whole day, not worrying about how they feel because they're perfect. And then on the third day is when I notice the breakdown. I start to feel the floor, my shoes aren't as supportive and it's time to sew a new pair of point shoes. There's no other shoe in the entire world that can do what a point shoe does. Not a tennis shoe, not a flat shoe, and not even heels. There's nothing that allows you to go over on your toes unless it's a point shoe. I've had about 700 pairs of point shoes in my career, and I know ABT spends about half a million dollars annually on point shoe budget alone. That's because each point shoe is handmade and they cost close to $100 per pair. Here's what I use to prepare my point shoes. I have floss, scissors, a knife, needles, a pen, and darning thread. The first thing I do is grab my elastic. I sew it in to the back of the heel. The reason I use this elastic and do the crisscross method is so my shoe is super secure to my foot. The reason we have floss is I use it instead of thread. Floss is way more sturdy and way more cost effective. I do one, two, three arms length of floss for usually one pair of shoes. I take the elastic and I line it up perfectly with the middle seam of the back of the shoe. And I just take it and I sew all the way around it. The tricky part about this is there's a elastic drawstring that runs around the shoe and you have to make sure when you're towards the edge of your shoe that you don't catch the elast elastic drawstring because if you do, it hinders the drawstring from moving forward and scrunching up, which is what its purpose is. So I stitch all the way around here. This is what it looks like on the inside and you're ready to measure and sew these bad boys down. The wings of a point shoe are where the vamp part goes soft and it starts to become more flexible. I know for me, I like to put it about a pinky nail's length behind the stitching on the side. The reason I like it in this particular area is it's exactly where the highest part of my arch hits on the shoe. Where you have your elastic position kind of changes how the shoe feels. If your elastic is um, maybe further down, you're not going to get as much movement uh, within the shoe and it's not going to bend as much where the further back it is, the less support you have basically. So I like to find that sweet spot and exactly where my arch hits the shoe is where that uh, elastic goes. That's where it pulls the shoe to your foot and it bends in that perfect position and it's the most secure for dancing as well. The shank is the internal support system that helps you stay up on releve. I don't know if you guys have seen that scene in Black Swan where Natalie Portman is de-shanking her point shoes, but some girls actually do that and some girls half shank their point shoes. And what that does is it allows for less support under the arch. And so I think a lot of women who don't have the most flexible arches or want to have the appearance of their foot being even more pointed tend to take that out so it bends more and it's easier to maneuver and control if i did that i would be falling out of my shoes and have absolutely no support all right Ribbons. I use elastic ribbons instead of satin ribbons. For me, elastic ribbons give more mobility, a little bit more comfortable. For me, the satin ribbons were giving me a little bit of Achilles ten like tendonitis almost. The reason I fold my ribbon when I put it on my shoe is it makes it a little bit more sturdy and because they are elastic ribbons, pulling on the ribbon where it's attached to the shoe sometimes causes little abrasions and frays within the elastic because it is a softer material. So I've noticed when I 
double them, there's not so much damage that's happening to the ribbon itself and they have a longer life and I can reuse them a little bit more frequently. So I'm gonna cut the vamp of my point shoes and that's the part that supports your foot when you're on your toes and make sure that you don't fall out of the point shoe. When you're on your point shoes, we're gonna pretend like this is the floor and you, this is your point shoe. You don't just hop up to your shoe like this. You have to roll through your arch up into point and then coming back down, you roll back down and that's a safety thing, especially from big jumps. It's almost like your shock absorbers, but you're using your feet. So for me, when I cut my point shoes and then restitch them together, it allows for the mobility of going through that demi point and rolling through without taking away the support and the original shape of the shoe. I cut about an inch down in between the drawstring down to the tip of the shoe. So now this is when I take my darning thread and the reason I use the darning thread versus the floss is it's a little bit closer to the color of my point shoes. It's cotton thread. There's a little bit more give to it than there is uh, the floss. You're almost reweaving the shoes together. So you know when you have your sneakers on and you lace up the shoes and you can pull it tighter or looser? This is basically what this stitch is doing. It's allowing it to you to have full control of how much space you give in there. So I tend to just keep it very minimal with the amount that I pull like taut on the string. Even though it's just a little bit of extra room in there. It's so much help more helpful for when I'm dancing and especially during big jumps when I'm landing from, you know, being high up in the air. It allows me more like shock absorption by rolling through the foot instead of just coming down and landing on the heel. So the box is the whole tip of the point shoe and that is where we stand on our toes. Darning is when you sew around the tip of the point shoes. The same thread that I used for this little middle piece right here and it's just making tiny little knots around the edge and the tip of the point shoe and what it does is it adds an extra little layer of support so when you're on the tip of your shoes you have a bigger surface area so you're not falling off and what it's supposed to really help with is balancing and pirouettes. So you're basically tying little teeny knots and sections throughout the shoe. And so see how that starts to make the little tees that go around the edge of the point shoe. So another great thing about darning is it keeps the shoe looking nicer longer. By darning around the tip of the shoe, when the satin does eventually start to come off and fray, which is very normal and happens to almost everyone's shoes, it keeps it contained just on the tip so it doesn't fray onto the vamp of your shoe. There's a darned shoe. So at this point, I'm done with any kind of sewing, cutting, stitching on my point shoe. And lastly, all I need to do is break it in before I wear it because these babies are hard. <laughs> The first thing I do is break in the shank and I always go to this little line on the inside of where the shoe has its two separate parts of the box and the heel. And here we go. Nope, didn't make a noise. Sometimes it does. Right where I break in my shoe is exactly at the highest point of my arch. When your shoe breaks lower, there tends to be less support on there. So the higher up it breaks, the more support. And if it's right in where the arch hits, that's where you're gonna find that total like perfect zone. So then I take the heel of my foot and I step on the box of my point shoe and I smash it flat to widen it out. And then sometimes I don't get it enough. So I stick it in a door jam and I yank it and it gives that extra little crunch. Okay, so now that I'm finished customizing my shoes, they're ready to go and I'm gonna head to the studio and take a little class and finish breaking them in over there. When I first put on the shoes, they do feel a little bit wobbly just because they're not fully broken in yet. And I really have to make sure that I am using the proper strength technique to make sure that I'm taking charge of the shoes and the shoes aren't taking charge of me. So after class, my shoes are in peak condition and they are totally ready for a full six hour day. And I feel comfortable in them. I feel like I could go and do any show, any performance, any rehearsal that I need to in these shoes.
Okay, so now I'm gonna show and tell you guys exactly why day two is the perfect day for my point shoes. Okay, so these are my perfectly broken in shoes and watch these. Whoa, I love the way they feel. I just feel super lifted, but they're also broken in enough that I'm not forcing them to go either way. They're just so molded to my feet. I notice that a lot, especially in Tondu, I'm able to like roll through the foot. Okay, now I can do a full day of rehearsal. Okay, that was a good workout. Uh, I hope you can understand why day two is my favorite day in point shoes. Hey guys, so it's day three and my point shoes are really starting to break down. I'm feeling my toes on the floor in the box of my point shoes, which is like for me the number one sign of like, hey, these things are dying, which is a bummer, but it's starting to get a little dangerous for me to dance. So I'm gonna take you guys along and show you what I mean by point shoes really breaking down. So when I go up to Releve, this is normally like my stopping point on these guys. Can you see how much further over I can go on these guys? Like standing on one foot, I almost have to be supported by the bar. Like I couldn't stand here like this. We call these in dancing, but it's shoes. <laughs> like it's just so unfortunate that like, oh, that I can't even do like ballet right now. See how they just come back because there's no support in these shoes. They look pretty, <laughs> but they don't dance pretty. I'm gonna show you guys how I jet glue my point shoes and get them ready for uh, the day. <laughs> this is something I do when I wanna get a few more hours out of my shoes. Here are my shoes, they're pretty broken in, but like I can fully move the tip of my shoe. They're just definitely starting to get really broken down. So what I do is I take my shoe and flip the back part of it over so it's just out of the way. What you're gonna do is, I what I do, so this is my, this is my right foot. So see on the tip right here, where the left is a little bit worn, more worn out because when you're standing on this foot, like that's where your big toe is. This is where it breaks down the most is on this side of the shoe. So I take it and that's where I start my jet glue and I just go on the inside and I just go right around this area and I kind of dribble the um, jet glue in down like this, like there's lines in there. So then after I do that, I peel back the leather insole piece. So then I take the jet glue and I jet glue a little bit along the arch, just until the nail. And then I just do a little dot over there and that's just to help reseal this and then make sure it's really flat when you reseal it. And then voila, <laughs> voila, your shoes are jet glued. So there's definitely certain things that I do that start to break down my shoes quicker. If I'm doing a variation where there's a lot of forays, pique menages, a lot of balancing turns, that's where I start to, my shoes start to break down a little bit more. If I'm just doing a ballet where I'm doing more of a standing role, not so much demand on the dancing, and it's more of an aesthetic characteristic role and I've got point shoes on, I can make my point shoes last maybe four days. So it definitely depends on what I'm doing and what I'm dancing that makes the life of my shoe three days or four days. <laughs> I dance in class with my Jet Glue Point shoes and by this time they're done. It's time to retire these shoes and to start the process all over again. And at ABT we've got a really awesome program where we uh, take our shoes, sign them, throw them in the basket, and they auction those off uh, for donations for ABT or with certain uh, like ticket sales and stuff like that. So it's really cool, they kind of get recycled in that way. I know that three days for the lifespan of a point shoe seems kind of ridiculous and crazy. And trust me, there was a point in my life, especially when you're a student and you don't have the funds to just go and get 10 pairs of point shoes a week. You don't have the demand of a, pro a professional dancer. You do your class in the morning, you maybe work a private here and there, and then you do class in the evening and you're working on just solid technique, maybe a variation every once in a while. Me, I dance six hours every single day and that's not including class. I'm constantly 
wearing and tearing on my shoes so I need that support and that structure for the amount of time I'm on them and the demand of my dancing schedule. Keeping my point shoes at the optimum peak is just like keeping my body at the optimum peak. As a ballerina, like my point shoes are an extension of who I am and what I do. So by keeping them in their prime, I'm keeping myself at my prime. Thank you guys so much for following along on my three day point shoe cycle. I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed giving you the information. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.